Namaste. I am Prakash Sahasrabhude from Mumbai. I present my paper, Application of Vedic Knowledge, Some Imperatives. Let us set the context up front. Our world is drifting towards an imminent catastrophe and possibly leading to extinction of life. This fear is borne out by the growing clamor on the topics like doomsday clock, earth overshoot day, carbon footprint, greenhouse effects, climate change, net zero campaign, how many hours we need. Most of these topics have come across, we have come across sometime or the other. Today's consumption and possession based lifestyle is unattainable and unsustainable because this needs natural resources and waste cycling capacities far exceeding what actually mother nature can cater. Possess and consume for sensory pleasure has become the sole purpose of human life. More dangerously, compulsive desire to possess something belonging to someone else by any means has become order of the day. This situation is dramatically opposed to the togetherness envisaged in Vedas. That is Sangha Chadvam, Samvadadvam, Samvo Manasi Janatam, Deva Bhagang Yitha Purve, Sanja Nana Upasate, Samano Mantra Samiti Samani, Samanam Manasaha Chitta Mesham, Samanam Mantra Mabhimantra Yevaha, Samane Nava Vishajubhami, Samani Vakuti Hi, Samana Rudayani Vaha, Samana Vastu Mano, the fragmented humanity due to self-serving attitude and being oblivious of the inevitable. This is our own doing and we must redeem it by our efforts. Time available though for this redemption is running out fast. Today's world is that of collective omission and commission. Endless greed and savage exploitation, utter contempt for nature, ignorance of collective and concerted human endeavors, divided and covetous thinking, as if legs are working against the hands and hands against the stomach. Utter indifference towards the purpose and intent, integration, interrelation and interdependence of everything that exists. And we are destroying this purpose, this integration, this interrelation, and this interdependence. Consequences are all pervasive aggression and conflicts, be it geographical, international, interdisciplinary, intercommunity, intra community, intra family, or even intra self domain. Today's environment of lust, greed, and aggression, etc. And the consequences are aptly described in the following verses from Srimad Bhagavad Gita. Dhyato Visham Pusa Sangaste Shupajayate Sangat Sanjayate Kama Kamat Krodho Vijayate Krodha Dhoti Samoha Samoha Sukati Vibrama Smriti Bhamusha Buddhinasha Buddhinasha Pranashati. Today's world is also characterized by egotistical contempt for collective human wisdom treasured over millennia or probably more, and summarized in Vedas and Vedic scriptures. Why are we turning to Vedas and Vedic knowledge? Can Vedic knowledge and wisdom salvage this precarious situation? Will Vedic knowledge guide us out of this present impasse? For sure, because Vedic knowledge is all about nature, man-nature relationship, protecting the balance in nature, safeguarding everything, living and inanimate, pivotal role of mankind being the only karma yoni. Puranas enumerate how existential threat to nature, earth and life are warded off time and again by reinstating dharma. Vedas and Vedic knowledge has remained eternally relevant. Bharat is the torch bearer of Vedic knowledge, hence we have a unique obligation to be fulfilled. Vedic knowledge tenets and essence have pervaded all walks and strata in Bhartiya life. All is not lost yet. Acharyas and saints served as carriers of Vedic knowledge. 
they restore trust and vedic philosophy trust in vedic philosophy and way of life time and again they reiterated the vedic knowledge in ways appropriate to the contemporary capabilities and needs without distorting diluting or compromising the core vedic knowledge this vedic knowledge appears to us in multiple but complementary forms such as vedanga upavedas brahman aranyak prasthantre mahakavyas purana jati puranas works of saints scholars and thinkers and they all owe and vouch their allegiance and subservience to vedas together they comprise vedic knowledge system and structure a representative list of vedic tenets emerging from such a system are entire existence is manifestation of divinity with underlying oneness in apparent diversity vedic scriptures are complete knowledge that which does not exist in veda actually doesn't exist human beings have endless potential to make or break the nature a representative list continues highest level of mental and intellectual faculties man or buddhi coupled with a sense of awareness of these faculties that is ahankar of human beings must be complemented by a sense of responsibility sense of wholeness is supreme vedic knowledge must be subscribed to in its fullness individual's goal is to integrate with the whole objective of human society is be all at peace be all flawless and wellness be all around without any trace of distress veda mantras reveal their real sense and meaning only to those whose hearts are filled with endless compassion for all living and inanimate things if that is so do we qualify to stick our claim to the vedic knowledge similarly truth presents itself at an opportune moment let us be aware the inhibitions and constraints imposed upon our vision and thought process by today's world and that distorts our sense of truth certain artificial conditions are established as truth today material and worldly motivations are the only motivations choosing pain and discomfort for the sake of relief and comfort of others is unrealistic relationship between possession consumption economic growth and happiness cannot be questioned each country community or section is entitled to define its own interest and privilege them over those of others human beings are supreme and hence will prevail over everything else what is the purpose of application of vedic knowledge then merely to fix some irritating issues of today's world or something radically different because vedas are not troubleshooting manual but are a guide to have auspiciousness at all times and in all direction dishak kalascha sarvesham sada purvantu mangalam to what length then we are willing to go even in reverse direction if need be let us apply the divine knowledge for its intended purpose with resolve to do what it takes else will we will end up contributing to trivializing vedic knowledge Vedic knowledge tells us how to live in harmony and peace with nature, nurture our inherent unlimited potential, strengthen positive tendencies, suppress negative tendencies. It also provides us a model of life, jivan ka pratimaan, which must be invoked in toto and not piecemeal. Dharma is the sole governing idea of everything that man thinks and does. May our desires. and our endeavors to muster and mobilize the resources to fulfill such desires be in accordance with dharma how to organize society and develop all encompassing system to facilitate conduct non conflicting with dharma dharma virodhi kaam few key imperatives emerge from this discussion holistic approach opposed to the ad hoc and fragmented approach of the day is important our attempts to restore order must be therefore holistic and not fragmented don't mix ingredients of incompatible system prevailing world order and vedic way of life are incompatible with each other mixing and matching components of the two system will be ineffective and detrimental further it may bring discredit to vedic knowledge vedic knowledge manifests beyond vedas so let us not undermine or ignore derivatives of vedas 
accommodate everyone according to their capability and needs, resist the temptation to restrict this endeavor to eye-catching projects. Be ready to adopt a totally different way of life to shun today's consumption and position-based economic order and lifestyle as proclaimed in Isha, Isha Upanishad. Isha Vasyam idam sarvam yatkinj rektayan jagat tena thyaktena bhunjitha maal dhradha tasya siddhanam. Defining moments warrant each step is taken carefully, ensuring no one and nothing is left behind. Focus on elevating mankind towards divinity is important because pollution and corruption that we see all around us today stems from the polluted and corrupt mind. I end my presentation here. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.